For anyone who's been paying attention as to what's happening on the Twitter sphere or the social media universe, you've probably stumbled across something regarding Patreon and its banning of Sargon of Akkad. And I want to lend my two cents to this conversation. So, here we go. I work in television, and on my wall to my right, my little cubicle, I've got a list of words that I am not allowed to say, or, or that rather we as a company are not allowed to say. They are imposed by FCC rules. Uh, they usually have to do with things that are highly profane or offensive. I still think it's bullshit. I, I feel like um, if you're going to be creating art and art with commerce, it's really up to the end user to decide what they want to hear, and I think a blanket ban on certain phrases amounts to a uh, infringement on personal liberties. But that said, when the internet was invented, I was astonished at the level of freedom provided by the ability to just say what I wanted and put it out there and see what comes back. It was what really drew me to making films uh, and commentary on YouTube. And although I don't make as much as other people, and my stuff certainly is much more milk toasty than uh, other users, I was still just drawn to that freedom. I thought it was just the greatest thing to ever happen to humanity. It turns out that a lot of other people disagree with that sentiment. And the best thing about the internet was that I didn't have to abide by those rules. That list in my cubicle I, I, could, I could totally ignore it. I could say, I want to say whatever I want, and it's really up to me. The responsibility is mine if I'm going to say certain phrases or words, and uh, I will accept the, cons the consequences that, that come. But I still thought that the internet was going to remain this free and open platform that we could say what we wanted, because in the end, what you could do on, say, platforms like Twitter or Facebook is you could mute and block users that you disagreed with. Well, now we're facing a future where mobs of people, small amounts of people, but agitated and loud enough that they can and do get people banned from platforms. It really began with Alex Jones and the banning of Infowars from Twitter and various platforms on the same day, uh, which looks a hell of a lot like collusion to me. I criticized that decision without condemning or condoning Alex Jones and what he says and the drivel that flows out of his mouth. As much as I find him entertaining, I don't think he's a very trustworthy news source. But what we have now is a legion of people on the internet who will pursue you to the ends of the earth and to any platform that you may uh, call home to deplatform and erase you from the internet if you offend them. And I think that this is a uh, this is a trend that's going to end poorly. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure in which direction, either for the people, the censorious people, or the liberty-minded people who want to say what they want. But uh, I don't think it's going to end well either way. We've seen this trend happening on Facebook with the banning of alt media. We've seen it happening on Twitter. It's now. Um, this sort of cancerous, censorious behavior has metastasized onto Patreon with the banning of Sargon of Akkad and uh, other creators who, you know, for better or worse, were making their living on this platform. And I'm on Patreon. Uh, I think it's a really well-designed platform. It's a very uh, predictable platform, or at least I thought it was a very predictable platform for uh, finding a way of, of uh, curating income so that you could predict long into the future how your finances were going to shape up so you could decide you know, how to make your moves, what, what projects to make um, in advance. And when it comes to business, predictability is really, really important. You can't conduct a lot of business in a region that is a war-torn or um, gang infested or, or extremely chaotic it's just it's not possible to conduct a lot of business it's uh, always very touch and go and dangerous if if you live in those kinds of places so patreon 
appeared to provide independent filmmakers with a platform that they could create predictable income. And that's fantastic. Now with the Benning of Sargon of Khan, it's clear that Patreon is not a predictable platform. Their terms of service are opaque. Um, another word is, uh, is unclear. They can change their terms of service on a whim. It's, you know, what, what's written down is not so much like a constitution where uh, the law is involved. It's more like a suggestion for them as to how they're going to behave. But for you, if you step out of line with a certain pedigree of people, uh, they are going to agitate for your removal from that platform. And that could take uh, any form, uh, whether it's a word or a concept or or even if you're just uh, discussing something that they don't like, these people don't, these censorious people don't like, they will try to take you out. And if you move to another platform, they'll chase you to that platform. And if they can't platform you, they will destroy the ability of that platform to exist or make money. You saw that with Gab. Now you're seeing that with Subscribestar, which is where people were moving from Patreon in order to continue their business. Without condemning or condoning uh, Sargon and what he said in, in, the, in, in the stream uh, where he said some bad words and was subsequently banned from Patreon, I think it's important to note that working in the film and television industry, especially as, a, as someone who considers himself a filmmaker like myself, I, I believe that it's important that we maintain the freedom to offend people. As an artist, you're going to offend people. As, a, as someone who's going to exp who expresses themselves in any form of media, whether it's writing or, or uh, audiovisual, you're going to offend somebody. It's impossible to not do. And so this is why the principle of freedom of speech is important in, um, in the arts. I mean, imagine if Quentin Tarantino was a new creator today. He was 25 years old, 30 years old, and he was writing Pulp Fiction, uh, but he, of course, was small, and instead of going for the big bucks and um, courting a, a studio, he wanted to make his film Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs independently on Patreon. It wouldn't be possible. Tarantino is one of the greatest filmmakers to ever live. Um, Patreon would not allow his work to be produced on Patreon. If you go back in history and look at Kubrick, the greatest filmmaker probably to ever walk the earth, his films were banned, I believe, in Britain, definitely in Britain. I believe it was Clockwork Orange and Lolita were banned uh, for several years because his material was offensive. And, I, and we're approaching a time in which the great filmmaker, the next great filmmaker of the day who's going to make something will find him or herself up against a wall of people who, who look to be offended because they, they want everyone to conform with how they see the world, with how they think the world should be. It's a very utopian ideal that if we just removed bad words and bad ideas from discourse, then the world would be better. But I think that is a very dangerous, uh, a very ill-conceived path to go down. I mean, if if Kubrick and Tarantino were to make films today, uh, just starting out on, on platforms like Patreon and Twitter and Facebook, I don't think that they would survive. To do it on these platforms where you have, um, where the mob can easily access you and the opinions of others and crush your ability to make what you want to make and say what you want to say, I, I just I just don't think they would be able to do it. I, I think that um, what this trend of censorship and deplatforming creates is a homogeneous thought, um, homogeneous expression, a single-mindedness where you have to think and express yourself in a certain way to be allowed to say anything at all. What we see now is that this behavior is affecting people who aren't offensive. Like if you go to Patreon and see the create, see and, and look at the creators that are being impacted by Sargon being banned, you definitely have uh, the, there is a sort of tangential ripple effect uh, hurting other creators who are unrelated to the people who make edgy videos. And um, 
it just seems really unfair. I think all in all, this this um, trend is very harmful to uh, public discourse. It's very harmful to art. If this kind of uh, instinct goes way back, it goes back to the Catholic League when you come to the, when it comes to the Hayes Code. It goes to it, it flows up into the 1990s with Tipper Gore and rap music. And now it's this sort of this uh, sense of moral outrage is now infecting everything on social media and we bow to it. They bow to it, which forces us as creators to bow to it. And I, I, it just pisses me off. If you don't like something, you can always change the channel. That said, I'm going to be deleting my Patreon account. And although I'm a small creator, I want to lend my voice to the notion, the principle of free speech and free expression because, damn it, if, if Tarantino and Kubrick couldn't make their films on Patreon, I don't think I want to be you know, on a platform that, that disallows that kind of brilliance because you just don't know where brilliance is going to come. You don't know where great art, uh, great thinking is going to come. And so uh, you know, we need the broadest possible range of expression online. And um, so I think in, in, in place of, of Patreon, I'm going to be opening up my own uh, PayPal a widget, my own little PayPal account so that you can go directly to me through PayPal instead of doing Patreon. And I know that they are in line with what's going on with Patreon, but I just figure I'll cut out the middleman. And I'll make it simpler and cheaper for anybody who wants to sign up for what I'm doing. I'll be, I'll be creating a, a, a Telegram account so that you can communicate directly with me through that. And, you know, we... As filmmakers, uh, you know, the people working in Hollywood and television and film are the inheritors of the great artists of the 1970s and 80s. If we, if we want to see independent voices rise to the levels of greatness that we saw, you know, my heroes of the past rise to, they need to be able to express themselves in a widest possible range of opinions. And if we are going to see the greatest artists of the 20th, of the 21st century rise up, the greatest political thinkers rise up, they need to be able to express themselves in the widest possible uh, range of opinions and language. People who control or desire to control language, desire to control thought, and desire to control you. And I think that we need to push back against that because if you allow people to control your language, they control you. And uh, personally, I don't want to be controlled. Other than that, uh, that's sort of my opinion on that. I have got a lot of other great updates with Changelings. Ooh, it looks like I've got an offer from Amazon. I've got uh, a lot of updates on my personal website, uh, thesignalisstrong.com. I have, I'm keeping up with my promise to reorient my channel here to incorporate the uh, intersection of film and cryptocurrency. So I'll be making another video about that probably tomorrow. It's a bit late. It's a bit late today. I've got to make some pizza from scratch. And I'm going to be talking a lot more about uh, the various media chains or blockchains that handle multimedia uh, in the coming months. I'm going to be making video entries much more regularly. And uh, I'm going to be pursuing a Changeling short film in earnest as well as a film that I'm co-producing with my friend uh, Connie Sue, her film Jeffrey, which if you go back through all my archives, you'll see a video about that uh, a few months ago. And um, hopefully this channel will grow in a direction that uh, I think will be about the future of filmmaking instead of the, uh, the past about it. And I think that uh, the way things are going now with the censorious nature of people and, and these various platforms uh, where uh, it, it looks like they've been uh, commandeered by um, ideal, ideologues uh, who, want, who wish to conform society and, uh, and people to their way of thinking, sort of, you know, their way or the highway. I think that the, it's important that we talk about the future of filmmaking, of media, and how blockchain technology is going to make uh, it's going to render their capacity to censor people moot. So I think in the next few years, uh, these efforts to deplatform people are going to come to a head with technology. And I want to be in the forefront of that. I want to foster that. I want to talk about that while I make my short films, while I make my content on my YouTube channel. Anyways, uh, keep an eye out for that. I will uh, be making a lot more videos. 
I've got a few weeks off here. And be oh, fuck you, you fucking camera. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Yeah, a lot more to come. I'm going to be having exclusive content on my uh, page, thesignalstrong.com, and uh, on my social media accounts. Anyways, that's it. I'll see you on uh, the social medias that are censoring us people. And uh, I'm going to eat some pizza. Fill out. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, click that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and sign up for my PayPal subscription. It's only $1 a month. It's like my version of Patreon, except it's simpler and way cheaper. You get access to my private Telegram channel, early access to all my work, live streams, exclusive content, and finally, you get what you really came here for, access to moi. See you there.